Okay, hey. Hello. Can we have a note taker that isn't Jacob? Volunteer today? With a hand in the air? Alex is going to be the note taker today. Thank you. Uh, cool. Okay. So, uh, hello and welcome to the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. It's a new name. It's the same old awesome. Uh, it's got a new name. So, that's cool. Um, we've got a note taker. That's good. I've remembered that for once. Um, shall we do a round of updates like we normally do? Yes, good. <laughs> um, okay, for me, um, I have been, uh, what have I done this week? Investigated and raised, yes, yeah, so, okay. You might have noticed that our JS IPFS API tests have been failing on Windows for about a month or two. Uh, I've sort of been investigating this uh, off and on uh, for a while, uh, and I've come to the conclusion that I should just open an issue on Go IPFS. Um, it looks as though there was a regression, as far as I can tell, between uh, 4.13 and 4. Point, well, subsequent releases, where Windows uh, IPFS nodes, uh, they are just not finding each other on the network, and they used to. Uh, and so our tests that require nodes to be connected to each other and get things from each other, um, they are the ones that are failing. And it's only happening on Windows. Uh, and it's only JS IPFS API because that's the one that talks to Go IPFS. So if you're wondering why uh, that, was, that, that was happening, then um, that's, that's why. I've opened the PR. Uh, you're welcome to go and have a look. Um, yeah, that was, that's been interesting to... to track down and also I'm not a native Windows user so it's been fun. Um, I've, uh, what else have I done? So I added a, oh yeah, right. So the libp2p connection manager stuff got merged in. Uh, it's not yet been released. Uh, I've added a PR to expose that configuration so that uh, when JS IPFS gets released next, people can start using the connection manager. Um, so JS IPFS API, there is a fix for getting a block that has no data. Uh, I've just released a, uh, a, a new version of JS IPFS API to fix that. Um, I added tests and found that there was also a problem in JS IPFS. So I've also created a PR to JS IPFS to fix this issues with getting a block with no content in it. Uh, the pin, okay, so the pin stuff got merged in. Hooray! Yes. Uh, the 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 problem that David Diaz noticed was that we had there were some tests uh, that were running in JS IPFS. Uh, well, there were some tests in JS IPFS, but they weren't running. They weren't being required. So um, it all was not lost because the interface IPFS core tests were still being run. But um, the ones that that had been written and were in JS IPFS mysteriously were never being run. Uh, so David opened a PR to enable those and uh, I tweaked and fixed it and merged it and no one will never know. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, um, I'm, not, I'm not blocked on anything. Uh, I've got a few, next up, um, I, I've got a few things to do on the PR for modular interface IPFS core tests. It looks as though everyone's kind of Happy with that, so that's great. Thank you for commenting if you did, um, or reviewing, or whatever. Um, uh, I think, so the, the main thing to do on that is, uh, David Diaz has requested that when we skip tests, there be some sort of description printed to the console for why it's being skipped, and I think that's quite sensible. So uh, I'm gonna see what I can do to, to enable that. Um, and then, what else? Uh, so it's 030 is the thing I'm sort of focused on. Um, connection manager got merged. It just needs a libp2p version. Um, uh, David requested that we also try and get in uh, libp2p config, his PR for updating the way the config works for libp2p. So I've just got to have a look and, and maybe get that in. Um, 
Um, and then, again, for the second week running, I might get around to reviewing the merging the MFS stuff for the next release. Um, but that is me. Does anyone have any questions on that? Okay, that's cool. Um, who is, who's next? Uh, so, Volker, you're up. Yes. So, I was working on the graph sync stuff, and I, so the exciting thing is that I kind of get it working, that I can get one, one file, like with one call, getting a full file without any back and forth between the, the two peers. Um, it was a quick hack, so it's not that useful, but at least I get an idea. So I know it's like about, I don't know, like 10x faster, so not that much. Um, so surely the graph sync won't make things faster because we have lots of other bottlenecks in uh, JS IPFS. Anyway, it gave me a good understanding of like how all the pull stream stuff and things, so um, it was worth the effort, and I finally think I know what graph sync is. So the quick summary is, what I would want to concentrate next quarter on is it's not about traversing graphs. It's not about making things faster. It's about you can send one CAD with some meta information and it will return several blocks. And that's the difference between BitSwap because in BitSwap you basically request one block and get one block back. So the difference is between sending one block with some meta information and getting several blocks back. This is what I will concentrate on. It sounds super straightforward, but it isn't. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so that's the core of graph thing, I think. And yes. Uh, and the next thing I will do is writing this down and also playing around a bit with lib P2P um, to see how well it will work with the graphs and stuff I will work on. And uh, another exciting thing is that Richard Snyder is working on the IPLD format changes that I did. So the spec was updated quite heavily, but mm, nothing of it was implemented. And Richard now works on the implementation. So that's pretty cool. Um, yes, that's all. Any questions? All right. Cool, thank you, Volker. Uh, who have we got next on the list? Uh, Hugo. Hi, guys. So I continued with my big files OKR. Uh, I tried to, imp uh, I, tried to I implemented a, a new data store using IndexedDB, but not going through the all level DB stuff. Um, it was a, a simple, a simple hack. Uh, makes uh, things a little bit faster, at least when we have all the blocks already in the um, in the browser. Because when we are getting blocks, uh, nothing else matters but the the overhead uh, for crypto. You can, I try to improve in several ways, but everything comes down to 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 crypto. Uh, that's why I. Um, try to focus a little bit more on that stuff. Uh, did a couple of um, hacks trying to make web crypto work. I tried also some WebAssembly stuff, um, kind of a, in, the middle, in the middle of things. Um, but yeah, that's it. What I have done uh, the previous week. Um, this week I'll try to all do all the retrospective stuff and planning and also at least make uh, the web crypto work with the local demon. I'm having a couple of issues with that. And also I will look into one issue that uh, someone posted on JS IPFS API, not being able to handle uh, kind of small uh, file. Uh, I will look into that. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, I think I promised some demos for uh, this week. I'll try to share my screen now. Okay, let's try it. Okay. Can 
you guys see? Okay. Yep. So this is a, a simple interface I made to do my testing. You can basically basically tell the peer you want to connect, uh, tell the, the repo name so I can change between repos because I need to test uh, different stuff and test it when I reach the limits and whatnot. Um, so it's a simple interface so I can choose fast between uh, different options. Um, one of the things, it's, it's the, um, the protobuf stuff. Um, that should be oh it was running <laughs> sorry okay so this one not much to see, just like some proof that it's, it's faster. Um, I can run it uh, with different blocks. This, this is actually getting uh, at least one block and running uh, the benchmark with the two implementations. So I can run with all these, the, these files and it will be consistent uh, at being like at, at, uh, at least three X times faster. Um, the ops per second will vary a lot between the, the, the blocks, but that's normal. Um, and it's basically uh, the PBF, it's, it's just faster. Uh, one of the things they do is they uh, com compile out of time the, um, the protobuf to a JS class. But I think we also do that in some of the, um, the repos that we use uh, protobufs, um, but uh, even though uh, I think we don't do this in the, uh, in Unix FPFS, it will still be faster even if we uh, add at least that. So this will, will probably be a, a, a good addition to Unix FPFS. And the other demo I would like to show you, let me just get the, um, the task manager. Okay. So let me choose one of these files. It will start the download. You can see that it knows the 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 size of the the, um, the file ahead of time. And it it shows it tells the browser uh, the correct size, and then we can see that. Okay, so the memory footprint stays really stable, and this will take a long time because it's getting the blocks, but at least it's stable, uh, and the memory stays really really stable also. So. That's that's cool, I think. And I'm not going to bother you guys with being here until the, the 29 minutes, but you get the point. So let's, and if I end the process, it fails. Okay. So I think that's it. Anyone that's has any questions? Yeah, question. I can't see everyone. Oh, well, <laughs> go for it. So just trying to make sure I understand it. Is that mostly about switching from protons to PBF or is there a whole bunch of other stuff in there too that's also contributing to the improvement? Uh, it's like two different things. Um, I've been testing a lot of stuff regarding this OKR. Some of it, it's uh, uh, the data stores implementation. Uh, another one is the using this new library. It's not new, but it's a different library for handling protobufs. And the other one, it's the download thing because 
you know, the demos that we had, we, we, we couldn't handle big files when we get uh, the blocks and assemble everything in, into one buffer and then we just throw it to the user in with one big blob. And if it's like 100 gigabytes, it doesn't work, right? So um, it's a couple of different, different, different things. This one about the, the downloads, it's it just about streaming everything and using a service worker to catch the request and build up a stream and respond through the service work to the, to the main thread. And the download is it's in streaming mode, basically. Um, is there any changes to be worried about or concerned about um, in terms of like how malformed data is handled between the old protobuf tool and the new library you're using? Can you can you repeat that, please? Are there any changes to how malformed data is handled? Like, have you been testing that between the two protobuf libraries? Yeah, so I've, I've been t testing with both implementations, uh, and I, I didn't found any 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 strange stuff. And it's 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 really I can even show you again. It's kind of trivial. Uh, it's the yeah, it's the right one. So this one. Basically, if you if you know the unmarshal uh, function in Unix F, um, FS, it's basically the same stuff. We just need to wrap all the instances together, and it it basically does the same thing. It uses the same proto file, um, but instead I uh, I create ahead of time the um, the schema class. This is auto it's auto generated by the the PBF um, package, so it's basically the same thing. And I've been testing uh, with the two implementations, and uh, everything works. I constantly check if um, I mostly work with the videos because it's the easiest way. To like to check if the final assembled file works, um, and it. It, it's been working, so I didn't find any, any any issues. I guess I guess what I mean, or what I was trying to ask, is uh, since we're using a different library with different tools, do the errors and things you get back in the case of malformed or bad data change at all? Because that's part of the public interface that users ultimately see. If anybody's paying attention to a particular type of error rather than just I got an error, um, does that change? Or do we have anything more specific or better to say about errors now than we used to? Oh, I, I, I didn't understand yet. No, it's it's the same. It's all the same. Cool. Anything else? Cool. Thanks, Hugo. Uh, I think we should move on because uh, we don't want to go over time. Uh, but if you have any more questions for Hugo, then maybe you can um, get in touch with him afterwards. Shall we, shall we move on? Uh, Diogo? What's up, guys? So, uh, this week. Uh, last week, I've been continuing with my OPR of the errors. I've made a small pull request by putting some error messages, and uh, I think with David, and he said to open a big issue like a roadmap that gathers everything that is related to daemon crashes and error handling. So we have like a, a table with multiple issues and we can track them if uh, it's possible to reproduce the errors manually or if we have tests where to reproduce those errors and stuff like that. Uh, please go, go check it out and leave feedback about it. 
Um, I also talked uh, with Vasco uh, and Hugo to, to create a ripple that gathers all the error codes in the IPFS code. That's in that issue too. Uh, please give me feedback so to, to see if it's positive to move that forward or not. Uh, this week I'll continue with this OKR and I'll have to to check the web UI and IPFS campaign and the current state to propose new OKRs because next quarter I'll be working in that group. Cool. Um, just a quick question. Um, the error codes, like how, uh, how are you plan planning to, to deal with those and how would they, how do they, do you, do you have a plan for like how they get serialized over, uh, over like the HTTP API? Uh, no, no, not really. I was thinking about, uh, creating, extending the errors, creating classes, and extending the error class. But I haven't thought about how to serialize. Uh, I have to dig and, and see how I'm going to do that. I'm proposing to create that repo. I'm waiting for feedback if it's going to move that way or not. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I think if with error classes, it's difficult to um, reinflate them after they get serialized, I guess, because you don't know, you don't know what class or what, where it came from. Um, but error codes, uh, possibly worthwhile pursuing. Um, cool, okay. Uh, okay, but we, we can talk, we can talk about yeah, that if you want. Okay, let's do that. Um, right. Okay, are you, uh, anyone, anyone got any other questions for Diego? Cool, okay. Uh, who is next? We've got Vasco. Okay, so, hello. Um, last week I was mainly working uh, on IPNS. Uh, I created a PR in GSIPFS with an initial working implementation of it. There are uh, some not required parameters left and uh, some more stuff, but uh, it works uh, this way and uh, I want to do some feedback before keeping uh, it further. Uh, I've also created a new package called GSIPNS, which is kind of a discussion name right now, because uh, uh, it's called uh, GoIPNS, that package, uh, the same package in Go, but uh, uh, we don't know if it's the best name or not, so I'm uh, discussing it with uh, David and Stavalian in order to figure it out. Then I merged uh, two PRs for uh, CTL, and um, uh, I'm blocked uh, in that uh, IPNS modules and naming uh, definition. And uh, for this week, uh, I need to uh, add a nanosecond precision to the IPNS records because uh, actually um, Go IPNS uses it, but uh, uh, GS, the native data, does not uh, have uh, nanoseconds. So I'm trying to figure out where is the best way to do that. Uh, I've checked some repos and big number, and I'm uh, uh, thinking about where is the best way. I will try to get a PR tomorrow, I guess. Then I need to finish uh, some tests in the IPFS, in the GSIPFS for the, my IPNS uh, PR, and uh, also work in the OKR uh, for leap year to peer for the next quarter, and uh, it's basically that. Oh, uh, and so just one more thing. I I've wrote uh, some notes for uh, in the, creating the IPNS spec. I will also try to create a PR with that this week. Uh, so, Alan, I think you have a question. Yeah, uh, just for me and maybe anyone else who is uh, a little bit clueless. When you say uh, IPNS working locally. What does what does that mean for JS IPFS? What can it what will it be able to do that it wasn't able to do before? Okay, so basically, when you have uh, IPNS working locally, you can have uh, publish and uh, resolve uh, IPNS names locally to that node. There is there is no routing, and if you connect a new peer, it will not work. 
the next step after having the IPNS working locally, at which was like my uh, second uh, OKR for IPNS, is to add the DHT. Cool, okay. And so when you say, uh, so like, we're talking about resolving peer IDs to content IDs, is that correct? We're not talking about like DNS names? No, no, no. Right, right. Right, okay. That is very cool. Uh, any questions for Vasco? No, you are free to go. <laughs> uh, Jacob. So I added interrupt tests last week for the private network um, that found some issues both with order of go dialing first or JS dialing first. So I fixed some issues with that. The only outstanding item I have is when there are bad network connections, the um, JS pull reader doesn't handle over reading very well. So if you have um, your, if your stream gets corrupted or in the instance of a bad private network, if that data is encrypted and it tries to figure out how many bytes is in the stream with the bar int, it can't figure that out. And then when it goes to pull in, it's like, okay, I'm going to pull in 120 bytes, but there's only five left. Um, it will sit there and wait 60 seconds. So in an effort to not have a 60 second test timeout, um, I'm working on a fix for pull reader. So that will just hang up into an error uh, when it should, instead of just socket timing out. So I think I have that mostly working. I just need to do some some final tests on that. Um, I demoed the private network at the IPF all hands. So if you want to see any of that, it's basically just Wireshark in action. Um, but that's there. And then this week, I'll fix the the poll reader stuff. Um, finish submitting all the PRs for private networking, um, and then work on some uh, Q3 OKR stuff as well as try to finish up the rest of the um, lib P2B config updates with David. Questions? Awesome, thank you, Jacob. Um, the, just for anyone else who's watching, the uh, all hands are also uploaded to YouTube, so you should be able to watch Jacob's demo on there. Um, uh, Alex? You're up to please. Hi, so um, last week I was trying to get uh, NPM on IPFS working. So this is a project that uh, it looks like David was working on a couple of years ago um, and hasn't really seen any updates since then, uh, which is interesting because IPFS has moved on quite a lot since then. So nothing really works in that project at all. Um, I started by just trying to use uh, against the running daemon and got loads of errors. So I thought, oh no, 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 there are tests. I run the tests. And there's only one test that actually tests the implementation. The rest have lots of stubbing. Uh, and yeah, that test doesn't work either. Um, so it, I was hoping it was going to be a simple case of just switching between Go and JS implementations of the daemon. Uh, but the project itself needs quite a lot of work to get it working again first. So I was trying to do some of that. Um, interestingly, when it, when it first spins up, it tries to contact a, uh, a node that doesn't exist anymore and download a uh, IPNS uh, thing that is a mapping of all NPM nodes to, so all NPM modules to, to content hashes, uh, and that doesn't exist either, and I'm not sure how you recreate that. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything in the readme about how you would generate and publish that. Uh, but it's been done, so somebody must know. So I was going to try and get a bit of David's time so he can take me through how it works. Uh, so that has been an interesting, an interesting week. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try and finish that this week. And hopefully, if Al can get some time to look at MFS, that would be really nice. And that is me. Any questions? Cool. Okay. Um, have you talked with Victor about it? Because like in January, he also did some NPM things. Right. Uh, no, yeah, no, but I will. Because yeah, because he mentioned it uh, when we were in Lisbon as well. So, yeah, so just yeah, catch up with him because so I don't have a clue what he was working. I just saw him doing something. So, yeah. mm. All right. Uh, question. Um, 
why are you looking at this now? Just out of curiosity. Because uh, David wanted it to be kind of proof that uh, the JavaScript and Go implementations of MFS were compatible. So, because it uses lots of MFS. I see. Of oh, course. Cool. Nice. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, Rob, you're up. How's it going? Uh, not a whole lot to report. I mean, I've, spend, I've been spending the last couple of weeks uh, pushing on people to try and redefine some of the language around IPLD so it's much more clear um, and to do things like comment on a lot of pull requests and, and push towards having better um, in code documentation and GoDoc generation for the Go stuff, add diagrams to the various builders and things like that. Um, so there's not a lot of like specific concrete things um, for me to report on having done. Uh, but the two things I am working on madly in the next two days uh, are finalizing some, some session proposals and things for docs related stuff at the summit um, and trying to come back around to that docs website and tear apart the front end code um, and rebuild it so that it's a little slightly better looking, but mostly so that it doesn't turn the fans up to a thousand percent on your computer when you load the site for more than 10 minutes. Um, I'm not even sure what it's doing that like does that, but I'm sure it's related to the like crazy brokenness of the existing old front end code that's there. Um, and then I just wanted to note that I'm going to be out when this coming Wednesday through the next Wednesday. Um, I, I might be around, but I will be in a cabin in Maine with with minimal internet connectivity, so. Cool, thanks Rob. Um, any, any questions for Rob? Okay, so the last of our scheduled updates is Gar. Howdy. Hey, yeah. I, uh, all my existing giant suite of pull requests for the bit swap implementations finally got merged. Um, so that's in my done column. Um, I'm currently blocked on a little pull request for peer ID to change uh, what to print returns to match the Go implementation. Um, and the reason that's a blocker is, is on my next, I'm implementing BitSwap uh, Ledger for peer, which locally for me is all but done. I'm writing the CLI test, um, but I'm gonna go back and once this to print is merged, uh, update IPF bit swap um, to better reflect how it should work and it'll clean up all the code I've currently got there because um, it's doing some weird reshuffling just to get that to print working um, and so that's on my next is the bit swap ledger stuff um, and then Q3 OKRs which I expect is going to be similar to Q2 which is this interface parity between Go and JS IPFS. Cool. Uh, I just heard interface parody, not parity, but yeah, <laughs> parity. <laughs> um, BitSwap Ledger. Um, I've never heard of that before. What is? Can you explain maybe what that is? It's the ledger for the peer. It shows you um, your sent and received, your score, which is you know. How, how well it's doing versus it received and the number of either bytes or packets exchanged. It's, it's the ledger for that peer that shows you just the stats of, 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 of the uh, uh, bit swap stats for that peer for you. Cool. Okay. Any other questions? Um, in which case we've completed the scheduled updates. Um, there is a final agenda item, but I just wanted to ask if I know, I can see we've got a Michael Rogers here. I just wondered if he was just, uh, hovering or wanted to. I'm, just, I'm just listening today. <laughs> yeah. <Right>. Okay. <laughs> You're all welcome. Uh, yeah. Hopefully next week I'll have some more stuff to say. I'm, I'm right in the middle of a lot of stuff that I need to sort of put together into text and then maybe present something on it. So. Cool. Okay, cool. Uh, so the final thing um, I've been asked by uh, David Diaz to mention that it's the end of the quarter. 
um, you should have all received an email already. Uh, and it's time, it's time to do the retrospective. There's a link on the email to a document where you've each got to fill in a slot for it, but I don't have access to it and I've never seen it before, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but presumably that's where you typed your words. Um, for how you thought it all went, and I'm sure it all went swimmingly for everyone, but do write what you feel in there. Uh, so then there is also the second thing, if you can please update your final score in the spreadsheet for your uh, for quarter two OKRs, um, that should take you not very long. If, well, hopefully it won't take you very long anyway. Um, and then the final, third and final thing is to maybe have a think about what you would like to do, or what you feel, David says, think very deeply. Uh, so we should all do that uh, about um, what your goals for the next quarter are and then uh, add them as, like, as, as, I guess, a comment on um, or a pull request on the existing pull request uh, that's there. Um, yeah. And then I think, unless anyone has any other questions or agenda items, sorry, I didn't scroll down to the bottom, but yeah, no, there's no, no one's added anything. Does anyone have anything else? Any other business? Are we done? Okay, silence is compliance with leaving the call now. So let's do that. Um, it's been very nice to see all your faces again. Hooray and go team. Uh, until next time. Happy IPFSing. Go, Bye. Go, go team. Bye. The other team. The other team is go team. We're JS team. Oh yeah, J JS team go. <laughs>